1,876. That is how many notes I have in my notes app. That is a lot. So anytime I need something for work, I'm wasting time playing digital detective, command effing, guessing the keywords, and by the time I found the thing I need, I have lost all the momentum. My notes app is a digital black hole. Look at my YouTube folder. We have folders inside folders. I mean, we have at least five layers of subfolders, and somehow I had two folders called partnerships. We have random notes labeled T1301229820. What is the secret code that I wrote down so many months ago? What even is that? We have half written ideas, zero context, zero follow up. This was just an endless scroll. And we also have password hidden inside lock notes. Secure? Maybe. But easy to find? No, definitely not. The problem here is I've built something so complicated, even I couldn't use it. So that's when it hit me. I didn't need another place to just dump my ideas. I needed a system that actually helped me get things done. So after trying many, many apps, I narrowed down to 10 apps apps that completely changed how I use my Mac and more importantly, made my brain feel so much clearer. If you've ever just opened up your laptop and felt so overwhelmed before even starting, this list might just be a game changer. Let's have some fun. Welcome to my productivity universe. This is basically the system that keeps my Mac and my brain from turning into a chaotic pile of mess. At the center of it all is my second brain. Yes, I know, I probably copied it from some productivity guru. Sue me. We also have a place to capture all the ideas and a place for reflection, for tracking, and supporting all these apps is my super kit. These are the apps that make my entire system work a whole lot faster. And that's just this one too that's kind of my secret weapon against procrastination. Because it removes that awful where do I even start feeling. And yes, I am saving that one for one of the last few ones, so you will have to stick around to see it. But trust me, it's totally worth it. So that's the map. It it all starts with Capture Land, where every idea or reminder goes the second I think of it. Because if I don't write it down, I will forget it. And that's where things changed everything. Let me show you. Meet Things. This app isn't just a storage dump for all my to-dos, but it actually helps me make them happen. I split my life into two main areas, life and work. And inside these areas, I create projects for my biggest priorities. For example, this quarter, my biggest work goal is to get crystal clear on my audience. So I made a project called Know My Tribe. Yes, I like to give my quarterly quests very nerdy names. It's just more fun that way. And inside each project like this, I wrote a short blurb about why this goal is important to me, what success looks like, and my deadline for the goal. I also broke this down into weekly quests, like build detail avatar in week one, plan for one-on-one -on -one chats in week two, and maybe hold first chats in week three to five. And each week has really clear tasks. I also set recurring reminders like the weekly community letter to remind myself to write community posts and to stay consistent in my quest. And because this quest is sitting right here in my sidebar, that reminder keeps me focused and helps me make progress with this quest. Which brings me to this very subtle invitation. Since my whole goal right now is to actually understand who I'm making these videos for and you're literally here watching, I would love to hop on a quick 15 minute Zoom call if you're down. Totally free, super chill, no sales pitch or anything weird. Just a fun chat about your setup, what you're struggling with, so I can make videos that actually help you. Links down below if you're in grab a spot, would love to meet you. Now back to why I love things so much. It's the little details that make it click. For example, if I'm making a YouTube video like this, I can break down this big task into mini checklists. Researching, scripting, filming, editing, uploading. And as you can see, I also like to jot down the core idea of this video just so that I don't forget what it's about. And this system makes the big projects feel way more manageable. I can also save these as templates so that I don't have to rewrite every time. Now, the today view is the first thing I check and update each morning. For example, today I have have to film episode 338 and this is my main mission of the day. I usually have a maximum of three to four tasks every day because any more than that, I just tap out. But as you can see, today I have a little bit more than four. So what I like to do is to kick all of these side quests into the evening so that the main list stays 
clean. It even syncs with my Apple calendar so I can see all my meetings right here without bouncing between apps. Next, the inbox view. This is the place where I capture every single thought or to do before I forget it. My rule is to keep my inbox empty. Stuff either gets moved to work or live or deleted and as you can see, I'm a bit behind. Things also syncs across all my Apple devices and it is unfortunately a paid app but honestly, super worth it. Because for the first time, I don't feel like I'm looking for my to-dos or drowning in endless lists. I know exactly what's on my plate, what's moving me forward and what actually matters. And that's why six months later, I'm still using things. Next, not everything in life is a to-do list. There are things I need to reference, not check off. And that is where, surprise, surprise, notes come in. I know, I know, I know. I just dragged my notes app through the mud. But the thing is, notes wasn't the problem, it was me. It was how I was using notes. I was using notes for everything just because it could do everything. But without a structure, a proper system, it was just 1,876 notes long and going nowhere. So I cleaned it up. Instead of over-organizing like before, I just simplified it to these main folders. We have work, life, how to, travel, co-op mode, and archive. These are basically the apps that I use on the day-to-day. -day. So this is my new system for the Notes app. I set a few rules to keep it from becoming a mess again. Rule number one, no more photos inside photos inside photos inside photos inside photos inside photos inside photos. It is maximum two to three levels deep for all the photos. So for example, under work, we have YouTube, business, money ideas, hiring, freelance. Under live, we have money stuff, home, gaming, shopping, mental health, music, recipes, coffee, health, car stuff. And if you can tell, there's nothing nested within these folders. These folders basically just contain notes. And under how to, we have Mac, SOP, camera, video gear, Lightroom, Photoshop, Final Cut, live stream, PTYX, YouTube, skincare, hair, taxes. These are basically notes about anything and everything that I've learned. And when I need quick access to that knowledge, I go here. If anything needs more structure, obviously I'm going to throw it to Notion. If I need to act on them, it goes into things. And if I'm writing a journal entry, I go to day one for that. Notes is still my fastest way to jot anything down, especially when I'm in meetings or while I'm traveling. And so now for the first time, my Notes app has an actual purpose. It's no longer an endless scroll of forgotten ideas. It's my quick access knowledge hub. And the best part, I actually use my Notes app now. And next, moving on to my second brain. Notion. Notion is my whole system. So how does this work? I have split my life once again into work and life. Before this, I would have ideas everywhere and no way of tracking their progress. I would waste so much time and energy just retracing each step, which ideas were actually good. Have I done enough research? What's the next course of action? Script, film, edit. But now I don't have to guess because right here, I have a whole ass system. So this is my content and Gene is basically my production HQ. It's where my ideas become real. Every video moves through a very clear pipeline from idea to research to writing to filming, organizing, editing, reviewing, uploading, and finally, published. This way, I know exactly what stage I'm at with each project and what needs my attention. And there's actually one thing I didn't show you guys in my Things app is actually this. When you click content, there's this thing of have big ideas that is supposed to go into Notion. So once every two weeks, I actually transfer these ideas into content buckets so that whenever I need a new idea, I just have to pick through this list, put it through my rating system. Once they're approved, I can start working on them. This way, I never run out of ideas. And if we step out of this, we have this dashboard. This is the first thing I see every single day. We have my YouTube charter. I love reading affirmations and why I'm doing this, why this is important. We gotta start the day right. And of course, Notion isn't just built for work. I also built a live OS to track my personal growth, this is the whole system inspired by Ali Abdal's Life OS. How it works is that we have quarterly quests. I set new ones every quarter. One work, one life. And I do this with Ali Abdal's free Zoom sessions and that makes 
it way more fun. I love Notion. Notion is free, flexible, and lets me keep everything in just this one hub. The only downside is that Notion is online only. So if I'm stuck in a place without Wi-Fi, no 4G, 5G, I cannot access anything. That sounds really scary. But since most of my deep work happens at my desk, where I have internet, it's not a deal breaker. Now, a good week doesn't happen by accident. I always need a plan. And for that, I use Apple Calendar. Planning my time doesn't mean I have to follow it to the dot because having a plan is always better than having none. I use this to give me a direction to keep me intentional about my time so that I don't just freeze in front of my desk in the morning wondering what I need to get done. Also, if it's in my calendar, it's way more likely to happen. I also like this rainbow calendar, aka color coding everything, because it's just way more fun and so much more readable. Now, a well-planned week is great until a one hour deep work block turned into a 30 minute YouTube session. Turns out planning is super easy. Tracking, that is what actually keeps me accountable. And that is where Toggle enters. I use this to track my hours in real time so I'm not guessing where my time went. I actually know. The timeline feature on a Mac app makes it even better because it auto locks every app or website that I've touched for more than 10 seconds so that if I forget to track something, Toggle remembers, it's got my back. And once you do this reflection thing for a few weeks, the patterns will show. There was this time that I realized I was spending over 40 hours a month just editing. And I asked myself, was that really the best use of my time? It just wasn't. So I reworked my entire workflow, cut my edit time into half, and eventually hired an editor. Ultimately, we all have 24 hours, and if I wanna grow my channel, I need to spend time on what? actually matters. So yeah, Toggle isn't just a time tracker, it's a reality check. It helps me spot the leaks in my time and helps me redirect my focus before I waste one more hour just tweaking one more thing. Now that you've seen how I plan my week, track my hour, but if my mood tanks, so does my productivity. And that is why I track my mindset too. Enter day one. Day one is my space to dump my thoughts and look back on what actually helps me thrive. Here's how I use it. I jot down who I saw, what I did, how I felt, and track the patterns over time. For example, climbing in friends, I'm exhausted at night, but it makes me so much sharper the next day, noted. For example, ice bath from Sundays weirdly makes Mondays really, really fun. So maybe do that more. This is like a cheat code. Lock in what makes you happy and do more of that. They want things across all my Apple devices so I can journal anytime, anywhere, even during mid toilet breaks. All right, remember that secret weapon I teased earlier? This is it. My stream deck is this tiny command center of dials and buttons powered by this ridiculously good app that lets you automate pretty much anything. For me, this is my anti-procrastination button. I love this so much for filming. I set up a button here that launches all the apps that I need in the positions that they want when I'm filming. Before this, studying used to be the hardest part. I had to remember which five apps I had to open to monitor audio, video, teleprompter, and I mean, who even remembers the app names? So sometimes I would just rather do the easy thing and just scroll TikTok. Having that much friction to start a task kills inertia, bad. And now it's just so much more fun. I literally press one button and opens up everything, lights turn on, and once I'm done filming, I press another button and everything shuts down. This is just so satisfying. And I've done the same for every major task that I have, like my morning routine, for Final Cut, for Canva, for Lightroom, all of that. What I've learned is do not estimate these buttons. They help me to remove friction to getting things done. Plus, it's just way more fun. I'm still in the midst of setting this whole thing up, so it's not the prettiest. So if you know how else I can optimize this even more, Please teach me your ways in the comments below. Next, let's talk about the one thing I refuse to waste any more memory space on. Passwords. I mean, you know the drill. You're standing up for a new account, and so you type in something that you think is strong and weak. Fine, let's make it more complicated. Great, and now you have to remember it, so you write it on your very old All My Password Excel document, and you save it, of course, and you close it and never look at it again. 
And the next time you try to log in, you feel too lazy to open up the Excel document. So you click forget password, you write your email address, send reset link, and that's how you find your password. That used to be me, copying and pasting from an old Excel document, searching in my notes for all my old passwords that I'm too lazy to open up my Excel document to start in, or just reusing the same three passwords. Shh, don't tell anyone this, because who has the time? But now with one password, I don't even think about it. It stores everything securely and autofills all my logins, whether on my phone or my Mac. It's not tied in with any ecosystem. You can use your Mac, your PC, Samsung phones, and it's not just passwords. I keep all my essentials here, router or Wi-Fi passwords, home kit codes, or even super important PDF documents. Security wise, it is locked down, encrypted, two-step access, and it is a paid service, which honestly to me, is a good sign because there's no ads or any shady stuff. Since switching to 1Password, my brain just feels so much clearer, no more hunting for passwords, logging in takes just seconds. So if you've ever gotten annoyed by passwords, I highly recommend trying 1Password. Links are in the description if you want to check it out. Number 9 on the list is Cleanshot. Cleanshot is what Apple screenshotting tool wishes it could be. Now, the second I tried it, I was just hooked. This makes capturing and sharing anything on my screen just way faster and cleaner. After you capture a screenshot, you can instantly annotate, highlight, blur, crop, or even hide your chaotic desktop. Thank you, CleanShot. I use it daily, like for circling my Broadway seats for Wicked. I've always wanted to do that on my screenshots, and now I can. This is so freaking exciting. And once you've taken a screenshot of something, it's copied instantly, so you can paste it anywhere. Who knew I would be so excited about talking about screenshots? What a nerd, I know. The screen recording tool is also way better than Apple's QuickTime because you get full control. I use this mostly to capture my old YouTube videos to create GIFs without using gfit.com. We can record the mic, computer audio, or both. Show mouse clicks, show keystrokes, and even turn on the camera. After recording, we can trim, mute, or even compress the file all in this same app. And you can even upload this recording straight to CleanShot Cloud. Super handy for sending recordings to friends without clogging up your messaging app. But my favorite use for this, I use this to preview and trim raw B-roll before adding it to my library. So there's no need to open up Final Cut Pro to trim my raw B-roll files. Amazing, but heads up, this is not free. It's $29 one time or $8 a month if you want unlimited cloud storage. To me, it was just super worth it to pay 29 bucks for this insanely powerful screenshotting tool. But if you are serious about async work, Loom is the next level. What is Loom? Well, Loom is serious mode for screen sharing slash video messaging with your teammates. It's basically my go-to for async meetings, which is a fancy way of saying, skip the Zoom, here's a quick video instead. And the reason why I love this app even more than clean shot or Zoom clips is because the workflow is just so smooth. It's very similar to what we talked about for clean shot. So you can record your screen, your voice, your computer audio, or even your face. But the second can you click stop recording? This uploads to the cloud, generates a link, copies into your clipboard, and you can paste wherever you want. There's just zero friction, super fast. And if you need to fix something, you can trim and even add new clips. So this is huge if you accidentally press stop recording before you actually want to press stop recording. I've used Loom for every single thing, from teaching my friends about smart home stuff to feedbacks to my editor. Hi Joseph! <laughs> Texting my editor was just way too slow, too stiff, so instead I prefer to just hit record, talk things through, draw on the screen if I need to, and done. And if I ramble, my editor can actually watch me on two times speed or skim through the transcript. This is a huge, huge time saver, and in terms of giving feedback to my editor, I feel like this method feels more personal, more human than just a make this better comment. The best part, this is free for basic use. I did pay for it because I wanted unlimited looms for my feedback sessions. Well, if this helped your digital brain feel a little bit less chaotic, you'll love this one where I fixed my space. And let's just say, it made a bigger difference than I expected. As usual, links to everything are down below. Stay maintained, Cherry. Goodbye.